Hello, my name is Bob. My daddy's here to do some research. And welcome to the Ancient Slumber Podcast. This is show number 38. My name is Chris Ward and I'm joined from America by Myron Schmidt. How are you doing, Myron? Good, Chris. How are you? Oh, I'm still alive and still wondering what the fuck's going on. Yeah, I know. I know. Me too. Me too. <laughs> we got got Boris over there and we got his funny uncle Donald over here and between the two of them, who knows what's going on. Oh, what? And I don't know why they don't just murder everyone now and get it over with. They're working on it. They're working <laughs> on it. Oh. A shit state of affairs to be in, but I suppose everyone's in the same boat, so it's not just us. Yeah, we're kind of all in the same boat. <laughs> we're kind of all in the same boat. Oh, well. So you're back from holiday finally. Everything is good. Yeah, I've had me August off. I've done me Fright Fest thing, which... uh I'm sure if you looked online, you'd have seen the various uh, comments from people on Twitter and this and that. It's good fun doing it online, but um, the choices of films were a little bit uh, dubious, to say the least. That That's kind of the impression that I was getting from the people I was following. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, Well, I, I suppose they haven't got the choice of films to uh, go through this year, but um, yeah, a couple of good ones, but I expected more than a couple, considering I watched about 15 of them. Uh, yeah, you would think more than a couple. Yeah, a lot of messagey films. Oh boy, really? Yeah, uh, yeah. We got that last year though. I don't know. I think it's just the state of horror films in general at the moment. Everything just seems to be messagey. Yeah, and I'm not a. I, I kind of want to be entertained. I don't need to be preached to. Yes, exactly, exactly. I like watching people getting killed in various inventive ways and getting their tits out. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it's not a review I can sell to any magazines or anything like that, but uh, but it's what I like. No, not really. <laughs> there we go. There uh... we go. So what are we do- what are we doing today? <laughs> we're doing the the virtually boobless Gates of Hell trilogy. <laughs> ah, there was a little flash of titty in one of them. There was. There was. There was. <laughs> there was. It was in the last movie, but yes, there yep. was. A- yeah, it, this is virtually, this is uh, more gore-tastic than skin-tastic. So. Exactly, yeah, we're doing Fulci's Gates of Hell trilogy, which was a suggestion from Dave. It wasn't yes. from Steve, like I thought it was, it was from Dave. Oh, okay. I don't know Dave's last name, so I'm just going to call him Dave. He's EPM74 <laughs> on Twitter, I think it is. Oh, yeah, right, he's the he's the, he's the gentleman that's, uh, he's married to an American, he has family in Oregon? Quite possibly. I, I think he, I think he was, and he was talking about the the horrible fires we've been having over here uh-huh. on the west on the west coast. So. Yes, far away from where you are. Y- yes, very very far away from me, but not so far. Well, kind of far away. From well, by the time because Trump does anything, they could be up your end of things, <laughs> couldn't they? <laughs> they? They may have to cross the Mississippi to get here, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's not impossible. <laughs> Just highly improbable. Yes, yes. Still, never mind. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, it was Dave who uh, asked us to tackle these three films. Okay. And we okay. did, because we, we listened to our listeners. We try to listen to our listeners, yes. Both yes, of them. We <laughs> as long as they don't talk at the same time, then we can't hear them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, our mothers don't even listen to this show, so we're, you know. <laughs> My mum doesn't even know what a podcast is. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Oh, yeah, so Fulci's Gates of Hell trilogy. But before we get into that, have you bought anything you want to talk about? I have not been buying much lately. I've not bought anything. No, uh, I haven't really. I haven't. And there's a couple of things I want to get, but I just, you know. Yeah. Well, it, this, in, in this current climate, for at least for me, it gets a little tough to spend, you know, money on movies. Oh, yeah. Well, you're not selling enough tea to the uh, Colonials, are you? <laughs> right. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'd like to get some colonials to come in to have tea. That'd be even better. Well, you could come in while they're waiting for the fires to go out, couldn't they? Have a little drink. Yeah, they could. They could. <laughs> they could. Have some tea, maybe a scone or a piece of quiche or something. Oh, <laughs> real men don't eat quiche. <laughs> it's pretty good. This week it's apple goat cheese, actually. It's really good. Goat cheese? And, yeah. Ugh. What's wrong with goat cheese? It tastes like nappies. <laughs> First, how do you know what a nappy tastes like? Uh, Second, I just it know. Not... <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask how I know. I just do. <laughs> or diapers, as you would say. <laughs> oh, but yeah, no, I really haven't purchased anything. I, you know, there's a couple I'd like to get. Um, is it Scream Factory that's doing the Friday the Thirteenth, like they did the Halloween? Uh, yeah, I uh, think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That looks like a nice set. And, mm. But man, you know how it is. Drop 120 bucks on a on movies is it's kind of tough at this time. Yeah. Be good. It's a nice looking set though. But uh, Oh God. Yeah, I, I couldn't is. play it even if I bought it because it's region locked. So. <laughs> right. I've got the previous set that, that came out in America. The one in the tin box. They got region three discs in them. Oh nice. So I've got that nice. one. And, uh, I thought you I thought you had a, I thought you had a region three player. No. Not Blu-ray. Mm. I've got a 4K player but it's uh, gotcha. region two. Uh, um no, I haven't bought anything either, really. Nothing uh, worth talking about anyway. But I did hear this week, I'm sure it's out there by now, that um, in December, Arrow Video are putting out Tremors on a 4K disc. Yes, I did hear that as well. Yeah, so my pre-order's gone in for that. <laughs> I haven't seen tre- I, I I haven't seen Tremors in years. I saw the movie theater when it came out. Yeah. Um, and I've only seen, like, the second sequel. Is, aren't they up to, like, five or six? The seventh one is out in a few weeks' time. <laughs> You know we're going to have to do it at some point. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> they're actually, oh. to be fair, they are actually pretty good. They're consistent. Okay. Yeah, I think it's the third one, I think. It's got some really ropey CGI in it. So it's it's not like a um, Halloween where half the, you know, you get a few good movies and the rest is yike. No, no. That, I mean, okay. they, they established that. Burt Gummer is going to be the main character through all of them, and it's just basically the last few movies are him teaming up with someone, and then they go to different parts of the world to tackle graboids. Gotcha. Okay. Last one was in the ice in the Arctic. I think. Doesn't sound like it's the worst concept ever. No, oh, no, they're pretty good. So they, uh, you know what you're getting, and they're entertaining enough. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll start. I don't even know if I own a Tremors movie. Maybe I'll start slowly looking at used bookstores for Tremors, and uh... you can get old DVDs cheap. Yeah, start scooping them up and stockpiling them. Yeah, I've got all of them on DVD, but I will grab that 4K of the first one because I love the first one. Gotcha. Got yeah, it was, that's with Kevin Baker, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, so with that in mind, should we move on to Good, Bad and Ugly? Yes, let's move on to Good, Bad and Ugly. Yeah. Good, bad, and ugly. I'm trying to look down my list because I had it all prepped earlier of what I'm going to pick, and now I've lost them. You pick one. Pick a good one while I look for one. Um, my good one is uh, the tale inspired by H.P. Lovecraft called The Color of Space. Oh, okay. I have that. I haven't watched it yet. I, I really I enjoyed it. I, it was, as you would expect, about you know cosmic horror kind of flick. Um, it definitely has, you know, to me, overtones of, you know, like a, a Joe Bagos bliss, kind mm. of a kind of a weird thing. I think it's from the same folks that did Mandy. Now, I may be the only person on the planet. I didn't care for Mandy at all. I didn't get it. I, I thought it was goofy, and I just didn't. I, I took a hard pass on it. Well, I can confirm you are not the only person. <laughs> but then I, I didn't care for Bliss much either. No, I actually really enjoyed Bliss. But I, I, Mandy just couldn't. I just, it just didn't do it for me. Okay. No, didn't do it for me either. But yeah, so I, I definitely enjoyed, uh, Color of Space. I think you'll like it too. It, it's a, it's a good story. It's, uh, yeah, I think, I think it's well done. The effects are, you know, the effects are pretty good for, for what it is. So I, I think you'll really, I think you'll really enjoy it. Okay. Well, if I don't, then you know the punishment. Yes. Yes, I do. You'll, Send a hitman over to make me Brussels sprouts. Yeah, to force feed you some goat's cheese. <laughs> That's terrible. I love those. <laughs> cool. Okay, my good is uh, it's an oldie, but it's a goodie. It's from 1988. It's Beetlejuice. Really? Okay. Yes. I love, people love that movie. 
Don't you like it? I, I've seen Beetlejuice once. Oh. And, and it's been, I don't know, a long time. Oh, ah, well, it's been a while for me, but I bought it on 4K. Did you? I gotcha. gotcha. Oh, and it looks fantastic. It really does. Oh, I bet it does. That's the one with Michael Keaton, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, all those yeah. lovely colours popping out of the screen. Michael Keaton on top form. Um, even Alec Baldwin's good in it. And I don't get the hate for Alec Baldwin a lot of the time. I don't mind him in a lot of films. Gotcha. I know he's had a, a troubled personal life here and there, but um, but who hasn't? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but yeah, but big, I know that. that I bet that uh, that from what I remember, I bet it uh, looks great in 4K. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, it's uh, the colours just really come out, especially the pinks and the greens and all that. From you know when he's in uh, the afterlife and oh yeah sure and the jokes still hit as well you know you've heard them all a million times well you haven't you've only seen it once but it's uh... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's still funny it still makes me laugh you can see why Michael Keaton got offered you know the roles that he did afterwards and uh, I'm still up for a sequel I'm actually surprised they haven't done one they keep going on about it and it was scheduled a few years ago I think I remember reading Michael Keaton was up for doing it but um. I don't know, I guess it's up up to Tim Burton, whether he wants to do it or not. Gotcha. And, you know, I think you hit the magic two words, why I'm not a huge fan of, uh, why I've been reluctant to see it more than once. Tim Burton. Ah, oh, like, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. He's, You know, he's like Jack Nicholson with me. If I if I hear the name, it's, I, I really got to force myself to get past it and say, okay, yeah, this is a good movie, you know, that kind of thing. And yeah, I know that's just me, but, you know. <laughs> I can take most Tim Burton up to Sleepy Hollow, and then after that, I Things like, you know, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and the stuff he did with Johnny Depp. I'm just like, okay. There is, there is only one. There is only one Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Gene Wilder. And that is Gene Wilder. Period. Exactly. I won't hear, I won't hear a word about it. Exactly. That, that's it. But yeah. But, um, <laughs> oh, I would recommend Mars Attacks. I do like Mars Attacks. Gotcha. Yeah, that is a funny <laughs> film. I know a lot of people don't like that, but getting that cast together to do what they do in that film, you know, fantastic. And you can't beat Ed, Ed Wood. That's a good film. I've not seen Ed Wood. Now, I did see uh, Mars Attacks, and that, that is <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah. I got it. Oh, I, I recommend Ed Wood if you can get hold of a copy. That is worth watching. Gotcha. Gotcha. But yeah, that's that's peak Burton. And after that, it's sort of really downhill. But um, yeah, Beetlejuice still holds up, I think. Looks fantastic in 4K. So uh, if you can get it, then get it. Nice. What's your bed? <laughs> now, I'm not sure... Anybody's going to agree with me on this, but the sequel to The Babysitter, The Babysitter Killer Queen, oh, okay. was just, was just to me, I, I, call, I would call it bad. Um, it tried way too hard. It was way too forced. It, uh, it just, you know, it just, they swung for the fences and it missed as far. It, it, please don't make a third one. Please don't make a third one. Please don't make a third one. I just didn't. I I just didn't care for it. I, the acting was fine, um, but once you got their little hook that they, you know, their little twist or whatever, you're like, oh, really? This is how you're going to do it? Okay, whatever. <laughs> but it, it just didn't click with me at all. It, it was, <laughs> you know, the last five minutes of the movie were okay, but everything up to that was like, oh, okay, not really. Hmm, okay. Yeah. I haven't seen it. I have seen the first one. I liked the first one. I thought the first one was nice. It was clever. It was funny. They should have just stopped. I don't really uh, remember it, but I remember thinking it was okay, but not as good as it was. I was led to believe. Yeah, it's not going to win Academy Awards. I thought it was funny and quirky, but I would have just left it at one and that's it. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, they're never going to leave it at one if the first one's popular. <laughs> No, you kind of just you kind of just rode the wave of hey, we made a nice flick. People really seem to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose you could apply that to my choice in bad, even though it's not a nice film. But um, I watched I Spit on Your Grave, Deja Vu. <laughs> First off, did you fall? Have you hit your head? No, 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 no. I am. Um... <laughs> You got a screener and you had to review it, didn't you? <laughs> How did you know? Um, God. Well, I got a screener. I ain't reviewing it. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's the long-awaited, by whom I don't know, sequel to the 78 I Spit on Your Grave. Um, it's nothing to do with the remake that came out in 2010, which I actually like. I really like the remake. And 
I quite like the original. I went back, I watched the original first, just to make sure, you know, get all my thoughts and that up to date. I went, yeah, okay, I'm going to go into this sequel. Um, it's two and a half fucking hours long. <laughs> it's a great revenge film that's two and a half hours long. Who thought that was a good idea? Well, the director. Whoever they had as editor, man, they, they fell down on the job. I'm, I haven't looked it up, but I'm assuming the director, is it Miyazaki? I'm, I'm assuming that he edited as well. It's, it looks like that he's put down everything that he shot and just hasn't taken anything out. And it's, the characters are just, oh, it's, it's Camille Keaton's in it again from the original. She's now a mother and her and her daughter get kidnapped by these rednecks who are related to the people who died in the first film. Oh, come on. Come on. No, really? this is true. True. And, and, and when I say rednecks, Chris. I mean, these are fucking, these are rednecks, I tell you. And oh, it's just abysmal. It's the dialogue's awful. It's no good actors in it. No, no, no competent actors in it. And it's say it's just that he looks like he's had the idea, he's written the script, he's filmed everything and just put it out. And it's just fucking awful. Okay, so so the I gotta interrupt you. The guy that they listed as the editor is Terry Zark. That's the director's son. And he oh, come on. and he he's he, in he, the film. He edited, he edited the original nineteen seventy eight, mm. Deja Deja Vu and I Spit on Your Grave two thousand nineteen, I think. Or He's worked on those movies or something. Okay. But, oh, God. Yeah, it's, it's just... Oh. It's it's ringing more money from the cash cow, basically. That's what it smacks of. And uh, he's got the whole family involved, and it's just not good. It really... I mean, I know people have their thoughts on rape revenge films and this, that, and the other, and that's fine. But whereas the original film, you could interpret it as a feminist agenda, or you could interpret it as just exploitation... This is just crap. That's how I interpret it. It's just absolute bollocks. It really is fucking awful. There's a new box set coming out over here in a couple of weeks. It's got all of them in. The original, the three, the remake, the two sequels, and this new one. And this new one is, skip it. Do not watch it. It's fucking awful. (laughs) Stick with the original. The remake's pretty good. I quite like that. Watch them. Skip the rest. Chris. Yeah. I I just want to clarify. I spit on your grave. Deja vu is two and a half hours long. Yes, two and a half hours long. Yes, it's okay. the same length it's... as the Star Wars films that have come out. It's the same length as Godfather Three, for fuck's sake. Yeah, but at least Godfather Three had some redeeming qualities. Yes, that's very true. That dialogue. It was an okay movie. <sighs> some oh, could say it had God. more cunts in it as well. Oh, did I say a rude <laughs> word? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I spit on your grave. Deja vu is just <laughs> awful. It's not even fun awful. If it was like a 45 minute short, okay, I could see that. If it, even if it's an hour after that, no, it's just too much. I gotcha. I gotcha. And the woman who plays the redneck in it, oh, there's a horrible bit where she forces herself on the, the woman who's being raped and, oh, it's implied lesbian <laughs> rape in there and it's just, no. <laughs> You know, I'll watch anything, but I don't mind it. If it's done well, this is just bad. Absolutely bad. <laughs> it sounds like I would enjoy Three from Hell more than I would enjoy this movie. This makes Three from Hell look like, I don't know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is bad. <laughs> I'm not a Three from Hell hater, but fucking hell, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do yeah. not bother with I Spit on Your Grave, Dodger It's fucking awful. Okay. All right, done. Go on then, give us your ugly. Okay, my ugly is, it's not a bad movie, it's an average movie. Okay. Um, it's called, it's on Shudder, it's called 30 Miles from Nowhere. Okay. Um, a friend, a friend commits suicide, a group of college friends go to the funeral, and weirdness develops. <laughs> um, okay. It, it's, I, I don't want to give the whole movie away, because if I start talking, it's going to give the whole thing away. I thought the ending was a bit, was a bit forced. I think they, um, I think they were trying for some some new ground, and I, I kind of see what they did, but they could have just, as they tried to force the concept in further and force it further and force it further, then you're at the end and you're like, you could have just stopped 20 minutes ago with an even much better movie. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's one of those where it's not a bad movie. It's it's The dialogue isn't bad. The direction isn't bad. It's just they keep trying too hard, and 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 then you're at the end and you're gone. 
I, I'm just kind of, you know how you're just kind of like, I've just missed it 20 minutes ago, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. And that, and that's kind of why I put it on the bad. Ooh. But I could see, I could see where a lot of people would really like the movie because it's kind of a, an interesting concept. Other, others have done a similar concept, um, but it, his interpretation is pretty good. Okay. But it just, they tried too hard. Oh, okay. Well, I haven't seen it, so I haven't heard anything about it. I liked The Shed better, if that tells you anything. Ah, well, I've seen The Shed. Yes, I have too. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I gave that a average review. <laughs> I think you did, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could have nitpicked that one to death, I think. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. But I, I enjoyed I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty easy. Okay. I think I gave it like three stars or something. But anyways. <laughs> cool. Okay. What's your ugly? My ugly, um, I struggled with an ugly this month, but the one I've come up with is one, I don't know if you've seen it, It's but it's got your favourite woman in it. Linda Carter? No, not that one. <laughs> Pollyanna <laughs> McIntosh. Oh, Pollyanna, yes. Yeah, the film's called Darling. I don't think I've seen that one. It's the third film in the woman series. Wait a minute, there's a woman series? Well, you know, they're, <laughs> they've got the same character in them. Okay, so, what's the second one? The second one is the woman. What's the first one? Offspring. I've seen The Offspring. Yeah, okay. I forgot about The Offspring. Yeah, you got Offspring, you got The Woman, and then you've got Darling is the third one. The Offspring is one of those, uh, what is it, Eight Films to Die For or something like that? Yeah, 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 one of those. Yeah. 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 And then, yeah, this is the third one. It's directed by Pollyanna McIntosh, and she's in it. Okay. Playing the uh, feral woman of the previous two films. Yeah, it's basically the little girl that she walked off with at the end of the last film is now growing up and gets discovered and sent to a convent and lots of... A convent? A convent, and there's horrible nuns, a pedo priest, and... Of course yeah, there is. And okay. Pollyanna comes looking for her, and it all ends with lots of hilarity, as you would expect. Um, yeah, it, it's fine. It's not amazing as you as amazing as you wanted it to be. It's not rubbish. It's very much in the middle. Um, I think her directing is fine. It's just, yeah, it doesn't quite hit as hard as the woman did, basically. Gotcha, gotcha. But it's grubby enough to sort of keep it within that same universe, and that's what why my be really. It's quite an ugly-looking film with ugly-looking characters in it. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, oh, sweet Pollyanna. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, yeah, I love that section in um, Tales of Halloween that she's in. Which one is she? Which, which tale yeah. of Hall- Which one is that? It's the uh, section where she... It's a bit like Hansel and Gretel. She wants plays like a witch who wants a baby. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. there's something strangely erotic about that when she's the witch trying to kill kids. I don't know what it is. It's <laughs> me and my weird fetishes. As bad as bad as would say, hand closed the door. I'm trying to watch a movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear old Baz. Yeah. Oh goodness. So yeah, darling, it, it's okay. It's not as good as the woman. It's probably. Not as good as Offspring, the lesser of the three films, but yeah, <laughs> worth a what? Worth, worth a rent. Nice. Um, is Tales of Halloween? Is that the one where the kids find out the group of four adults are child killers at Halloween? They show up and they start knocking them off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I love Tales of Halloween. I, th- I prefer it to Trick or Treat. I can understand why. I, I think Tales much of more Halloween re- as much well. more rewatchable. Yeah. 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 Well, the, the tales, the, the quicker tales, for one. Yeah, yeah. I really love, there's one called, oh, what's it called? I think it's called Saturday the, thir- the 14th or something. And it's, um, it's a take on, it's basically Friday the 13th meets Evil Dead with a little bit of Alien thrown in. <laughs> which I just fucking love it. I gotta go back and watch that movie. Yeah, I'm going to. Yeah. Around Halloween time, give it another few weeks. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we go. Brilliant, that's that done. Right then, should we move on to the main feature? Yep, let's move on. Okay, let's go with the first one of the three. I watch these out of order because I'm rebellious like that. But the first one we're going to cover is from 1980, City of the Living Dead. Here's a trailer.
dead. The living dead. A cursed city. Where the gates of hell have been opened. You've got to. You must reclose those gates. We interrupt this program to bring you a special broadcast. Now which police <gasps> authorities have declared a state of emergency. Effective immediately. trance did you see anything besides that tombstone oh yes i saw a priest who by hanging himself opened the gates of hell what it's all saints day a demanding implacable enemy whose search for blood is never satiated right then city of the living dead from 1980 directed by lucio fulci starring christopher george catriona mccall carlo di Maggio, and loads of names i'm like to butcher uh <laughs> Michele Suave, I know him, not personally. And Robert Sampson, I can read that one. There we go, they're in it. All right. And the synopsis, according to IMDb, is a reporter and a psychic race to close the gates of hell after the suicide of a clergyman caused them to open, allowing the dead to rise from their graves. Oh. <laughs> that sounds like a good film. This was a first time watch for me. This was a first time watch. Fantastic. Yes. And go on then. Talk us through it. What did you think? I, you know what? I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I I enjoyed all these, just to be honest. Okay. <laughs> the quote from your son of they make no sense. Yeah. No, there, there's there's the, the plots are as bad as a porn movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you speak really, from experience, obviously. They're really they're, no. They're really <laughs> they're really not that plot intensive. They're not character driven at all. It is. The plot of the character, they're just a conveyance to display gore and zombies. And that's not a bad thing. It, nope. It's really not. Um, you know, it's Fulci, so he's got these, these, <laughs> these eye shots every five minutes, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, and they got classic stuff. It's just like Argento's demons. They've got classic lines. And in this movie, the best, the best line is when the cops are interviewing some people about a psychic who died during a seance communing yeah. with the priest <laughs> yeah, spirit. Yeah, yeah. And this cop who I had to actually look up, I, I was hoping it was might have been Bobby Rhodes or you know, I was I was hoping. But no, was, but I can alas, see where you think that, yeah, yeah. Uh, alas it wasn't. Uh, but the cop says, You're either on grass or pulling my leg. <laughs> <laughs> but the, wait a minute, wait a minute. So A we don't A we don't say grass anymore. B does grass cause that? Powerful hallucinations? I think not. <laughs> well, uh, being a good Catholic boy, I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> there was there was one series of TV shows I watched, and they were just obsessed with marijuana and how evil it was. The whole and I can't remember the TV, but every episode, man, there was somebody dealing pot, dealing grass, and it was just oh my god, it was hysterical how obsessed they were. It's <laughs> 
Well, but, well that, with that in mind, I mean, I don't, I don't smoke, I don't smoke grass, weed, cigarettes, anything like that. But I've never ever left a pub at closing time and stood there while two blokes who were off their tits on grass and got into a fight. <laughs> But I've seen people tanked up on booze doing it plenty of times. Yeah, yeah, so what does that yeah. tell you? I, I have never met a mean stoner. Never. No. They don't take a drag, throw it on the floor and go, right, and come on! <laughs> right, they're like, dude, you threw my roach on the floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, well, but, man, that's like so uncool. <laughs> but, you know, and it's, and it's awesome because the dubbing is terrible. Yes. The, ver- the vernacular is horrible because they're supposed to be in Louisiana. Um, at one point, oh, that's where they are. I was, yeah. I was hoping you'd know. <laughs> <laughs> at, at one point, um, this guy says, I'm closing the bar early and, and I'm vamoosing. Yeah. I mean, and, and these guys, and, and it's so funny because, you know, the other two dope dorks in the bar leave the bar and step outside into what can only be described as a Lovecraftian fog. <laughs> I mean, are we just, it's the best episode of Cheers ever, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> I mean, is the fog ever present? But the fog in this, what is it? It's Innsmouth or Dunwich or wherever it is. Dunwich. Um, yeah. It's ever present. So obviously it's a nod to H.P. Lovecraft. Yes. But it just is, it's goofy fun with a bunch of weird kills. You know, like uh, the drill scene. Poor Bob gets a drill to the head. You know, that kind of stuff. Oh, that's so. Was it our mate in it from um, Cannibal Ferox? Uh, I think so. Giovanni Lombardo Radici. Yeah, I think so. Probably my favourite Italian actor. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, he gets that drill to the head. That's quite a a good scene, yes. Yeah, and the other line, uh, God knows what else will happen. And and he says this right before All Saints Day, the dead are supposed to walk the earth. I mean, there's just really clever shit that they they put in here. (laughs) And it's... The plot, forget about it. It's the dialogue is is ropey at best, but it's the headshots, the eyes, and just the stupid one-liners that just make this a ton of fun. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the guy who played the cop isn't credited. He's not. He's not. No, I'm pretty sure he's been in loads of loads of Italian films. And he's never credited. Yeah, and the, what I like the best about this is they're coming up on two hours, two and a half hours, whatever, however long the movie is. They're like, shit, we got to end it. Somebody get across, stab the priest, let's get over it. Let's go get lunch. Yeah, let's <laughs> I mean, just stab him and it's done with. Right. Stab him and some cat food falls out his body and that's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, I just love it. I'm like, okay, that's a wrap. Let's go get lunch. Oh, I actually really like it. Okay, you haven't mentioned my favourite scene yet. Oh, oh, gosh. I'm not sure what's your favourite scene. It's with Michele Suave in the car with his girlfriend. Okay. Having a bit of tongue action. They flick on the headlights, they see the priest, her eyes start bleeding, and then she throws up all her intestines. <laughs> why? Yeah. We don't know. No one else ever does that. And why does everybody die by having their brains ripped out the back of their head? I don't know. It can't, I... it can't be difficult to break through someone's skull, isn't it? But they do it a lot in these Fulci movies. Yeah. They, they, they do it a lot. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, you know, skull action. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's a weird one, this film. Um, I can't remember the first time I saw it. I really can't. And I'm going to guess that it was sometime in the mid-2000s. Because you've got to remember, these films weren't available to us over here. Not in any uncut form. Oh, right. Thank you, Mary Whitehouse. Yes. Yes, so yes, yes, yes. I saw House by the Cemetery in the 90s, thanks to an imported American videotape. But the other two, I don't think I saw till like the mid-2000s. And um, this is the one out of the three... That I like the idea of the most because it's got a fairly, I, want, I don't want to say logical or coherent because it's not, but Careful. a fairly straightforward plot if you go by the IMDb description. You know, a priest kills himself and weird things happen in Dunwich. Okay. Yep. Yep. I think out of the three films, it's got the greatest atmosphere. It's just like foggy graveyards the whole time. You think so? Really? Yeah. Even when, well, no, I mean, I'm not physically. Huh foggy graveyards but just that atmosphere that, no i know what you mean yeah that, even when you've got like christopher george in the middle of the day smashing into coffins with pickaxes narrowly missing whoever's inside it still feels like you're in this gloomy uni- almost universal horror frankenstein graveyard i love that gloominess that 
faults you get to it. But it's a film that I, uh, I've never really loved it. I've always liked it and I've never loved it. Okay, okay. And interestingly though, out of the three, on this watch, it's the one where my opinion of it has changed slightly and I liked it a little more. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. I love the Beyond and I'm very fond of House by the Cemetery and my opinion on them has not changed since I first seen them. Uh, this one, I liked it when I first saw it and then a couple of times after I was like, ah, it's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This time I watched it. I, I really enjoyed it. Interesting. Okay. But yeah. I can see that because it's, it, it's, it's a fun movie. Oh yeah. Yeah, and it's, I don't know whether it's one of those films where once you've broken through that barrier of Italian filmmaking and you just let it wash over you. And I think that's what you've got to do with it. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, Christopher George in it is fantastic. He's great in everything. He always looks like he's about to burst into laughter. I don't know why. He's yes. just got, yeah, he's got yeah, this yeah. cocky grin on him all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. He does it in The Exterminator as well. But, um, no, he's a really great presence in it. Catriona McCall's very good in it. So we've got Giov. Giovanni Lombardo Radici is a good in it. It makes no sense, but it probably makes more sense than the other two films. Yeah, it's just great. It's it's a gory, atmospheric, occult horror film. Right, gotcha. And say you're either on board with it or you're not. And uh, I, yeah, I think as far as Fulci goes, it, it's definitely top tier. Gotcha. So, what did you give it out of five? I I gave it four drills to the head out of five. Wow, okay. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I, I, you know, I was just, it's one of those movies that it makes little or no sense. It's got little or no plot, but acting is way over the top like you'd expect, but it's it's a lot of fun. Good. I gave it four mouthfuls of intestines out of five. Nice. We're, we're in agreement. We're in agreement. I think out of the three, it's possibly the most rewatchable one. I can see why. I can see why. Yeah, and I say, if you just want to put on something that's going to, let the atmosphere soak over you and just let it happen. I think it's absolutely great. Yep. Yep. Nice. Okay. Brilliant. Wow. Yeah. We're, we're sounding positive. I know, aren't we? This is unusual. Are, are we okay? Do we have COVID? Uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm thinking I'm getting the impression that might change. Interesting. Okay. So obvious, obviously we're going to go to the beyond. I could be wrong, but we're going to go to the beyond from 1981. Let's play a trailer. Okay. You are Eliza, aren't you? Yes. My name is Emily. I've been looking for you. to where you came from and hurry leave this place sixty years ago everybody in this hotel disappeared every last person A painter called Spike, who lived here, closeted in his room, had found a key. Tell me, with all those accidents, you think you'll um, give it up now? I couldn't do that if I wanted to. Well, I won't give in. Nobody here. I 
can feel a presence. Somebody else is in here. Oh, some weird story that Emily told me about room 36. Emily? Who's Emily? The blind girl that lives in the old house by the crossroads. was constructed on one of the... <laughs> Woe be unto him who opens one of the seven gateways to hell, because through that gateway evil will invade the world. Beyond 1981, directed by Lucio Fulci, starring Catriona McCall again, David Warbeck, Larry Ray, Al Cliver, Cleaver, Cliver, I don't know how you pronounce it, Veronica Lazar, and Larry Ray. The plot, according to IMDb, is a fucking miracle if they can decipher it. Is a young woman inherits an old hotel in Louisiana where, following a series of supernatural accidents, she learns that the building was built over one of the entrances to hell. Ooh, like right them. Had you seen this before? No. Wow. Is this a first time watch? No. Yeah. Fuck it, though. This is going to be good. Okay, then. Yep. I've never seen this before. Um, and it's it's not bad. It's not great. I didn't like it as well as I like City of Living Dead, for sure. Okay. I can, I can understand that. Yeah. Yeah. But first off, they, they did some nice effects. Now, in yeah. order to get to these effects, they the first scene of the movie where the, the alleged warlock who's painting um, gets hit with only the largest chains known to man. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's some proper industrial chain there. I mean, that, it's I don't even know what to say about that. But that's come off a docking that. yard somewhere. It was the dock the Titanic. Yeah. But but you know they had to do that in order to make you know the the gore effects, which actually were really pretty good. And that and that chain scene, that one actually is a very good scene. Mm-hmm. Super impressive. Um, but, you know, then we, you know, then we have other people start dying and, and we have a guy that goes down into the sewer, you know, because that's where everybody goes under the basement and he gets killed. And so he's in the hospital and he's in the board, right? So we got a guy in the board laying yeah. there. His wife goes in, in, in the morgue in the hospital. Not the funeral home, the hospital. Yeah. His wife goes in to put him in a suit in the hospital with her daughter <laughs> outside. Put him in a suit. Amidst dead people. Put him in a suit. <laughs> yeah. Now, of course, the only reason why the wife's in there putting him in a suit is so we can watch the EKG machine. Yeah. The warlock who's apparently come back to life. But it was... This is going to be a long movie. It, it <laughs> wasn't bad. It was good. It was... Probably to be even more on the core side than um, City of the Living Dead. I, yeah. I enjoyed the movie. It was much more, this one had a lot more zombies in it. I'm not the biggest zombie movie fan. This one had a lot of zombies. Then we go to, you know, the City of Hell, which has gore and one zombie. And then we go to, you know, the next one, which is completely different feel for the whole movie. But, what I liked most about this is, is that, you know, his various kills of people are executed. You know, the guy comes back to life and tries to kill people. Yeah. Is that at the end, the two main characters who I didn't write down their names are running away and they end up back in the basement of the house. And then they yeah. stumble through the, 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 what can be described as the gate of hell and they end up in hell. I thought that was a really nice effect. I, I thought that was kind of ingenious. It was clever. I went, bravo, Lucio, this is good. It was just a slog to get to that point. Okay. But uh, overall, not not bad. I mean, you know, the dialogue is as you would expect for an Italian horror movie, the dubbing, the plot. I just, for whatever reason, really liked The City of Hell a little bit better. It, it reminded me of, uh, what's the James Bond, The Man with the Golden Gun. It reminded me of that 
when they're in Louisiana, right? And it's it's so over the top stupid. This isn't one point. Isn't there like a car flip and some circus music noise in the James Bond flick? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the city of Living Dead reminded me of that, but the beyond just I, I just didn't it didn't get to that level for me. Oh, there's a comparison I've never heard before. Okay. <laughs> But I mean, but think about it, you know, because you got you're in in the south of the U.S. in the city of the Living Dead. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, with that stupid bamboozing, <laughs> and then you know, and it's just like all I can think of is just that, sh- that sheriff in the James yeah. Bond. What the hell's his name? Sheriff J. W. Pepper. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. Somebody pointed something out to me the other uh, day I'd never thought of before. You know, in Live and Let. Is it living at Dar? Is it Mammoth the Golden Gun? No, it's Mammoth the Golden Gun. They're in, um, oh, where are they? Where are all the karate and the martial arts going on? It's not Vietnam, is it? But they're out there. They're in Asia, aren't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. Why is Sheriff Day J.W. Pepper, a devout American patriot, <laughs> looking at American <laughs> cars, or looking at cars in <laughs> Vietnam or wherever it is, and going, <laughs> they're not as good as American? Why is he no. trying it out then? <laughs> it's on vacation! I know! <laughs> He would. He wouldn't be over there trying out their cars. Well, he's J. W. Pepper. Of course he would. <laughs> <laughs> I want a J. W. Pepper prequel. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord! Oh, I'm up for playing him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that's funny. <laughs> oh. Okay. Right. So the beyond. Um. I. I said we were going to disagree. I fucking love this film. Do you really? I absolutely adore this film. If people say to me, ask me about Italian horror films, obviously Demons is the best. Well, yes, yes. This is up there. This is like two or three for me. I fucking love this film. Again, I can't remember when I first saw it. I'm thinking it was probably about 2008 sometime around about then. I mean, everything you've just said... It's like talking to my son when he says, oh, this doesn't make sense, that doesn't make sense, and you're you're sitting there pointing these things out, and I'm just going thinking... Yeah. So what? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of wish J.D. and Pepper had showed up. <laughs> well, yeah, that would, yeah, that would push the score up. Yeah, it's, I adore this film. I, it makes no sense. It absolutely is completely bonkers, but fuck it, I don't care. It's probably my favourite film that has no plot. <laughs> I, I can absolutely see that. The gore is fantastic. I love the, I love Joe the Plumber. When he turns up, I mean that is one ugly fucking zombie. The makeup effects for the time and for what they are, I think, are brilliant. It's just gore and gloop and people's throats getting ripped out and eyes gouged out. Yep, yep. I could do without the uh, clockwork tarantulas. But, I mean, again, that scene. Why does that happen? He falls off a ladder in a library and tarantulas come at him. Why? It doesn't matter. Why not? Why not? Because they're not lobsters. That's why. It right, could be anything. Right. right. Yeah, The Beyond is a total head fuck of a film. It's people talk about dream logic, and I don't know whether that was Fulcher's intention or whether he was just putting down everything on screen that he could. But yeah, if it's just a fantastic film, I absolutely lose myself in it every time I watch it. I always find something that I haven't seen before. Yeah, it makes not a lick of sense, but fuck it, I don't care. It's got the gore, it's got the stupid occult nonsense, it's got the blind girl who didn't live in the house, but everyone's okay. seen her, and all this crap. Oh, God, yes. Yes. Ah, I forgot about the blind girl. Yep. <laughs> With her evil dead eyes. Are, 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 are you Liz? I've been waiting for you. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Why? We don't know. We never find out. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, you got the zombie bit at the end, which I believe was added on by Fulci, because I think he was basically told there's not enough zombie action in it. And it's like, well, it's not really a zombie film, but no, put some in. Okay. So he did. Hence why they haven't got much makeup on them at all. The scene you said about at the end when they go into the gates of hell, um, yeah, one of the great endings. It, it actually was really good. It really was yeah. a good ending, yeah. I may be wrong, but I do believe that the bodies that are laying on the ground when they're there, I think they're homeless people that Fulci basically paid to lay oh, there. Okay, while he filmed. all right. I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. I absolutely adore The Beyond, and I will happily watch it any time. It came out earlier, was it earlier this year or late last year? Shameless put it out over here. On a Blu-ray, a 4K restoration Blu-ray. Nice. nice. Which is what I watched. Mm. And it's a gorgeous looking film. 
when you look at all that gore and the blood and the pus and everything else coming out right. on the screen, it's just of fantastic. Course. It is. And then I'm I can understand people watch it and going for the first time now and going, huh? So if you're not used to Italian filmmaking and the way they do stuff, I completely see why people would dismiss it. But yeah, I come back to this every year or so. Nice. And I nice. still get something out of it, which I love. And I can't explain why. I just do. Same as Demons. I just love it. But having said that, I gave it four chains that held the Titanic out of five. Wow. Okay. I did. Even having said all that, I really enjoyed it. It, it was it was a good flick. Cool. Okay. Well, I go a little more than you. I give it four and a half Joe the Plumbers out of five. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Clockwork Tarantulas always put me off a bit. But um, when I first saw it on DVD, a really crappy DVD many years ago, um, the, the spiders look real. But when you watch it on Blu-ray, you can only see, I think it's the first two at the front are real. Gotcha. And all the ones behind gotcha. them are clockwork toys just wobbling yeah, yeah. behind them. But, um, yeah, I love the Beyond. Four and a half out of five for me. I think it's fantastic. It's one of nice. my favorite Italian horror films. Nice. Absolutely love it. Cool. Right then. I, I think you and I may disagree on this one. Okay. Well, you never know. I have seen this before, but it's only been once. And I do know that Bobby is absolutely the most annoying, you know. But anyways, let's play the trailer. Oh. Let's play the trailer. <laughs> to a widow who finds out her husband butchered his mistress and then took his own life. That's where Peterson hanged himself from that iron rail. Ah! Oh, Project on suicide with a researcher commits suicide. Don't go inside, whoever you are. Don't go inside. Someone's in here, Mommy! House by the Cemetery, 1981, directed by Lucio Fulci, starring Catrona McCall, 
Paolo Melco, Giovanni Frezza, and lots of other people whose names I'm not even going to attempt because I'll get accused of being racist. Right then, the plot is... A New England home is terrorised by a series of murders unbeknownst to the guests as a gruesome secret is hiding in the basement. To me, this flick has a different feel than the other two. This one has a lot more eeriness okay. compared to the other two. It's got... To more me, than City of the Living Dead? Yeah. To me, it's got some moments of genuine tension. City of the Living Dead, I kind of... It was after those two you know, doofuses in the bar stepped out into that Lovecraftian fog <laughs> and I, and I kind of started laughing. You mean Norm from Cheers going outside, yeah. <laughs> yes. I kind of started laughing, and I I couldn't take any of the fog seriously after that. Okay. But for whatever reason, this movie kept its level of eeriness. And even it's kind of at the end, they had a little moment of tension that was not not badly done. But it it just it felt different than the other two. It felt a little better than the other two. It's spite of Bobby's poor dubbing, which is the most annoying voice and the most annoying lines ever. Mommy! Mommy! Yeah, I, I know. I, I can see the girl, Mommy! He kind of wished he might have died as a character. You know? It just, that way he wouldn't have <laughs> any more words. But it, a lot of it's really, it's interesting. I, I love, like, the little flashbacks to Americana. They had a, a Woolworth luncheonette scene. Where yeah, they, yeah comes out of the store and there's a Woolworth luncheonette, you know, and mm -hmm. in the South they've had protests of those. So that was kind of a nice slice of Americana. Um, let's see here. I, the scene though that, that always gives me, that gives me pause and I spent a few time going, Lucio, what did you do? So babysitter's knocking at the door, right? Because <laughs> people yeah. keep going into the basement against their better judgment. The, the, the person who's down in the basement that is being kept alive by the, the dead people that he kills is, is coming to get her. And, and Bob knows, all he's got to do is go to the door and pull it open. It's not locked at this point. All he's got to do is pull it open. So mm -hmm. but what does Bob need in order to pull the door open? He needs what only looks like a curious George stuffed animal and a, and, a, and a pink gun. Yeah. Now, why? Because in his <laughs> child's imagination, he's thinking, I'm going to go and protect the babysitter. I know. So I'm going to take but, my gun and my teddy bear. <laughs> But Lucio, Stupid little wanker. But Lucio, give the kid a normal looking gun. I mean, what? Is it a unicorn gun? Is it going to shoot unicorn poop? No. <laughs> Help me, Lucio. But that, that scene right there was just like, oh boy. It, it did, it sort of fit in the movie, but not really. Perhaps um, he's got a pink gun because he's got the voice of a 60 year old woman. <laughs> now, for, for, you know, because we've got Bobby Spence. An inordinate amount of time unsupervised in the basement of this movie. Yeah. Where the, where unsupervised the by a babysitter. <laughs> Why have they got a babysitter when the mum doesn't work and she's at home? Where where is mom? So Bob's <laughs> unsupervised running around, you know, Doctor Frankenstein's lab. We got Anne, the the nanny, not doing shit, and <laughs> it, and Tweed Dad is off, you know, mixing it up because somebody's about to shoot him in the head for coming on the property of a, of a gravestone. <laughs> That caretaker, man, he was a little rough, wasn't he? What are you doing here? <laughs> you need to leave now. Like, what? Okay. <laughs> Back off. Didn't you think there were a lot of unnecessary close-ups on the dad's face? <laughs> As if to say, oh, the dad's evil. He's going to do something evil. And he doesn't. <laughs> there are so many unnecessary close-ups because we've got the other little girl. We've got the, the Anne. We've got the mother. We've got... God, there's so many close-ups in these full two movies. It's just hilarious. Yeah. It's like a Sergio Leone Western at points, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> They're all in the same rooms. Close up on eyes, close up on eyes. Right, right. But I think this movie has, I think, more close-ups per minute than the other ones combined. Yes. This one, to me, had an inordinate amount. Having said all that, the ending of the movie is a little forced, but, you know, after we get through the whole key thing, and then Dad shows up, and, you know, and it, <laughs> what, does the tweet jacket prevent him wielding a hatchet like a normal person. You know, he's swinging the hatchet like, you know, 120-year-old man, you know, with no arms. Yeah. And it, it, <laughs> but once we get past that, it, there's actually some nice tension involved. And, and then you have the ending of the movie, and you're like, oh. And you go, and really what you start to think is, huh. Who? Okay. I guess you apparently. Go, what the fuck was that all about? <laughs> exactly. And, and it's funny because then you go, 
oh, so whoever did the movie The Others with Nicole Kidman and M. Night whatever for Six Sense went, you must have watched this movie went, I could do that as good or better. Because I guess Bobby's always been dead. You never I know. think most people could probably make it as good or better, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but having said all that, I, this was, I'm going to shock you and say this was my favorite movie out of the three. Wow. Yeah. Yep. I did. Okay. I, I enjoyed this the best. Um, and I think it had to do a lot with the eeriness wasn't as comedic in the city of the living dead and it had yeah. less zombies and they didn't show Dr. Freudenstein as much like they did the other monsters. This guy was just kind of, you know, the camera going up towards somebody and then an arm reaching out kind yeah. of thing. Um, and I like that effect. I, I didn't really need to see that the ugly dude. Okay. I, I, I didn't really like this one. Cool. Okay. Um, right. And, and this yeah. is the only one of the three that had, only one of the three that had boobies in it. Yes. Titty shot at the beginning. Yes. Right, right, right. It was, it was quick and perky, but they were there. It, quick and perky, how I like them. And that was <laughs> half, half a star on the score for me. <laughs> yeah, this film's a keeper. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. Yeah. I saw this back in the 90s. I Again, it wasn't readily available over here, but I managed to get hold of a, a, a VHS player that could play American tapes. And um, in the early days of the internet, around 96, 97, I started importing a lot of VHS tapes from America, and this is one of them. Gotcha. It's, I, knew, I knew the name of the film. I knew the, I had a poster of it, I think. I love the cover art. And, um, of course, I wanted to see it. And I remember at the time thinking, this is weird. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I didn't really see it again until Arrow put it out on DVD. Gotcha. Probably around ooh, 2010, maybe, something like that. And uh, out of the three, it's the one I've probably seen the most. It's the one that I've got that little bit of nostalgic glow for. I do think it's the weakest of the three. But, <laughs> that, said, but that said, for a long time, maybe not now, but for a long time... It was my second favourite of the three. Oh, nice. So it's, yeah. just, it's just been recent that City of Living Dad has overtaken it. Yeah. And I sat and watched this last night with my son. And I said, come on, son. Come and watch some proper Italian filmmaking. Right, right. And this is a good one for him to watch. Absolutely. Because so far, he's not been impressed with the Italian stuff. He's seen Demons and he went, that is all right. So, well, and after that, I wasn't, I wasn't allowed to put him up for adoption after that. So... <laughs> We had to, uh, I tried zombie flesh eaters. He didn't like that very much. Again, so it was alright. He liked Cannibal Holocaust. <laughs> you, you've got to, when you watch these movies, you have to almost get into the mindset there's going to be no plot to be, yeah. to discern of. The dialogue is going to be ropey. The yep. dubbing is going to be the best part. Um, the guy that sounds like the girl is going to be the best dubbing. It, you know, that kind of stuff. You got to, you got to prepare yourself mentally that this is what it's going to be. It's it's all the experience. It's not yeah just the movie elements. It's the movie elements plus this plus this plus this. The trouble is he's doing a film studies course at college at the moment, and so okay. he's going in there and they're talking about Hitchcock and Tarantino and all these big filmmakers who've got these certain style, and they're talking about plot analysis and what things represent, and this, that, and the other. And then I go and stick on House by the Cemetery, and all that goes out the window. Well, yeah, it doesn't represent anything. It represents an hour and a half of fun. A filmmaker who had half a vague idea and the means to put it on screen. Right, right. Which is right. basically what Italian films are. Um, he didn't hate it. But to be fair, they're a showcase for practical effects, um, and they're an examination of different supernatural tales that are not overly complicated in terms of plot character development. Yeah, yeah. So, House by the Cemetery, if you break it down in, in look at it with a critical eye. But I will say oh. this. I will oh. say this. These Fulci movies put Stanley Kubrick to shame. Plain oh, and yeah. <laughs> Plain and simple. <laughs> Take the least favorite Kubrick, or the least favorite you know, Fulci movie, and it outshines anything Kubrick's ever done. Sorry. Yep, you, said, you, said, you said your son was doing a film studies class, and I had to add my mansplained two cents worth of nonsense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Overrated Kubrick and David Lynch. <laughs> I don't get it. Sorry. 
I don't either. And you know what? I, I may lose some sort of a metal card or horror cred card. I, I just, what's a TV show that really bangs on about Twin Peaks? Yeah. Well, okay. I, I try. I've made it. I, I just, it's not my thing. It just isn't. Well, I would say this now. You've just said it, and I've just said it. We don't get it. And I'm going to tell you now, 95% of the people who go on these podcasts and talk about how great David Lynch is, they don't fucking get it either. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, it's superb, because what I love about David Lynch is, like, you don't know what he's trying to say, but he's trying to say something, but if you ask him, he won't tell you, but you have to watch it, and then you watch it, and you can't figure it out. Shut the f- It's about it nothing. Is- <laughs> it's a cheese dream. That's what it is. <laughs> the entire the man has built an entire career out of making you bullshit. Think it's he's made an entire career, <laughs> career out of bullshit. <laughs> Suddenly, he's gone up of my book. How do we do that, Chris? Chris, how do we do that? <laughs> how do how do we how say do we David Lynch has made a career out of bullshit, and here we are loving Lucio Fulci? <laughs> <laughs> how do we follow in Lynch's footsteps? How do we make our own personal career out of bullshit and be known be known for it? Exactly. I just, I'm not denying his technical prowess as a filmmaker. Of course, absolutely. No, he, he's made a film and I haven't. There you go. But let's be honest, yeah. it's complete bollocks. <laughs> he knows it's complete bollocks, and he's sitting at home rubbing his hands going, ha, 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 they bought it again, ha, ha, ha. I'm convinced sometimes that happens. <laughs> of course it is. There's no other, what's he trying to say? He's trying to say you've got too much money and you'll pay for any old crap. That's what he's trying to say. At least, at least. The nine Fast and Furious films they made. Yeah. It's got cars and they go fast. Yeah. That's it. That's it. They don't yeah. take it any more than that. Makers, <laughs> what's Vin Diesel trying to say <laughs> in those films? He's trying to say, that's what he's trying to say because he can't right. talk fucking idiot. But, yeah. Right, exactly. Fast cars, women with hot pants on. Yeah. Great. Right. And that that's it. it the, cool. There's There's nothing else. I don't care about, oh, he's trying to say like behind the picket fence is like, the American dream is like not really a dream. It's like a nightmare because like all the, cause these people and they're like <laughs> weird people and they're like monsters, but they're not really there because they're like part of your imagination, but they are there. But oh, shut up! It's crap. It's not real. It's bollocks. I know. <laughs> it's Anyways. not good. It's not clever. Just because he uh, knows how to light a shot and frame a shot doesn't mean it's good. Right, right. But he <sighs> sure, sure doesn't know how to frame eyes. That's belongs no. to Fulci. And breathe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, House by the Cemetery. I sat there last night watching it with my son, and I was picking it apart. I really was. Like, why has the babysitter with the painted on eyebrows, why is she there when the mum doesn't work and she's at home all day anyway? We don't know. And the way that Fulci foreshadows everything is like the uh, mannequin dummy with the head that falls off that looks a bit like the babysitter. Ooh. I, I know, right? Right, right. Why is the dummy got, why is the dummy got blood and guts? <laughs> Who is that little girl that keeps popping up? <laughs> we find out. <laughs> we find out at the end, right? No, we don't. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Who is she then? She's the the the, the yeah, exactly. The, the, no, no, the, <laughs> she's like the the. She's dead. She's a spirit. Her and Bobby are now dead spirits together. They're playing in the house. It's like the old kid and the others. So is Bob dead now then? Yeah, Bob's dead. Yay! Bob's dead. Mommy. Yeah. He's not gonna say Bobby anymore because he's playing with his friend. My favorite bit in this because, is when Bob You know the little the little boy that he hears crying in the house? That's him crying. No. Oh. Yeah, see, see, you gotta Yeah. It yeah. makes no fucking sense how far the cemetery. <laughs> David let's eat your heart out. It's Bob. Bob is a metaphor for something. Chris I'll, next I'd still rather watch this than any fucking David Lynch film. I know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my favorite bit in this is when Bob is left in the car on his own, because you could back then. And he's sat in he sat in the car, and that little girl's going, Bob, Bob, I'm behind you, Bob. And Bob turns around, and she says what her name is, and he goes, Hi, I'm Bob. And I said, She fucking knows that. She's just been calling your name across the street. You fucking muppet. Right. <laughs> it's just like, oh, yeah. But no, House by the Cemetery is a fun film, because you can sit there and pick it apart. I do think it's the weakest of the three films on a technical level. Um, the gore is good. I love the the knife blade through the back of the head at the beginning of the film. Yeah, very good. Yes, yes, yes. And I think Fulci put in that rubber bat attack in the middle just so there's some blood in the middle of the film because nothing really happens to the end. Right, right. 
But it is classic haunted house stuff at the end when it, Dr. Freudstein comes after them and all that sort of stuff. It is good fun. The gore is great. Um, I would say this holds more nostalgia for me than the other two. Okay, gotcha. I do... What did you score it, by the way? A 4.5 perky boobs out of 5. Ooh, okay. I gave it a 4. Four, uh, uh, babysitter painted eyebrows out of 5. There you go. It's always been a fourth me. I've always really enjoyed it when I've watched it, but it on this watch, I'm going to say I preferred House by the Sem... Uh, not House by the Sem... I preferred City of the Living Dead. Nice. Nice. It's gone up for me. Yeah, so... um, Cool. Okay, yeah. So your ranking was... Your worst one was... The Beyond. Oh, mine's going to be House... I say worst. My least favourite on this watch was House by the Cemetery. Right, right. And then City of the Living Dead is next for me, and then House is first. There, yeah, see the Living Dead for me, and then the Beyond is my favourite. And really, what we're talking about is Shades of Greatness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just four, four, four and a half stars out of for all three movies. That's pretty. They're great. all around the same area. Yeah. yeah. Next time yeah. I watch them, I might prefer one slightly more than the other, but yeah. the Beyond will always be my favourite. Right. Right. Excellent. Well, we've put that one to bed, then, haven't we? Yes, we have. Cool. I suppose we'd better move to some feedback, haven't we? Because that's going to take us about a year to read. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to go first because I have an email in from Blue, um, but it's not about what we've just watched. This has come in about uh, Final Destination, which I forgot to read it last time because I'm lazy and disorganised. Okay. forgot it was there. So I'm going to read that now. This is about our last show, Final Destination. All right. Cool. Hi, guys. Blue here again with a bit of feedback on the Final Destination franchise. I have to confess I haven't seen them all as I only own the first three movies, so I won't be rambling all that much. I'm afraid you did, Blue. Anyway, right. <laughs> okay, Final Destination. I thought there would be a fair bit of Humpy Pumpy with it being a film full of teenagers. <laughs> you know, a bit of action in the plane's toilet, but not hold, a lot. Did Hold on. Yeah. Humpy Pumpy? Okay, yeah, sorry. carry on. Yeah. Carry on. <laughs> Sexual activity. <laughs> no, a lot did get sucked off in the plane, yeah, but not those sort of people, no. It was brilliant. I love that scene, but alas, it was only a premonition. I had a premonition earlier. It was about me eating a big, fat, juicy sausage. And I did, with ketchup. It all got a wee bit saucy, so much it dripped on my top. She's being filthy again. Disgusting. Anyway, back to the film. <laughs> so the guy oh, has a leaky... I should have left that bit out, really. So the guy has a leaky toilet. Funny <sighs> enough, so do I. And I started to feel a little bit uncomfortable at this point, so I decided to make sure there was nothing in the bathroom for me to throttle myself on. I don't want it to look like I had a strangle wank like that guy did. No, that could be quite... Uh, Disastrous thing to see, couldn't it? I really like the concept of death hunting them after they cheated it by surviving the plane explosion, but I like the lassie getting blatted by the bus even more. Hell, that's got to hurt. I could have done without the FBI agents. One, they sucked and not in a nice way, and two, questioning kids without an appropriate adult. That's very naughty. That's very true. So then we get to the teacher's death, and it all got a wee bit complicated. It seems death needs more than one chance to bump off an adult. It verged on slapstick comedy for me. Potential electrocution, slipping on water again, stabbing herself, and then blowing up the fucking house. Yeah, it brought in a bit of suspense, but yeah, okay, it looked cool. The line of you have to get your head together right after the kids see their mate have his sliced off was right where the ketchup dripped off my sausage. And yeah, okay, we'll leave that comment there. <laughs> I quite enjoyed the movie. It relied a bit too much on the possibility of electrocution for me. I know it's there to make it look like an accident, but what about falling down some stairs and banging their heads really badly? or falling from a window and being impaled. Having said that, I gave it three and a half strangle wanks out of five, because, well, he didn't get to finish the fourth. That's very true. <laughs> Final Destination 2. The crash scene was one of the best I've seen in the movie, but we already know it's a premonition, and I'm beginning to wonder if there's something in the water in that town. I found getting everyone who should have died in the first film together on that road to cheat death twice a bit unrealistic, but then it's a movie, so carry on. What have you done? You just dropped your camera. No. No, I'm just okay. standing. Up. I'm just standing up on behind the camera. You're not having a strangle wank, are you? <laughs> <laughs> There's a plot for a film. Two podcasters. One has a strangle wank. The other one has to get the plate. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, help me. Anyway, 
And it did with some spectacular deaths. Impaled by a ladder, a crush death that made me squirm, decapitation by a lift, by an airbag which impaled a head on a pole, and my favourite, sliced by a fence wire. That got me cheering. What made it was the girl's expressions afterwards. What should have been one of pure shock and horror turned out to be a look of, oh dear, like they see that sort of thing every day. Then it all ended with a spectacular barbecue explosion. That was good. They complicated the storyline a bit too much for me. I didn't want to have to keep up with who should have died first and why they didn't. But do you really think if Death was hunting you like that, that the last survivor from the first film would leave her safe, comfortable, padded cell? I think not. So this gets three barbecue spare ribs out of five because the other two are in the tree. Yeah. <laughs> true. Very true. Final Destination 3. So we know it's a group of kids, premonition, shit kicks off, but this time on a roller coaster. I've never been on a roller coaster, one, because I get motion sickness, and two, because I always look at them and have that premonition, so fuck that. I also notice it's now three films in before there are boobs. Yep, we, I noticed that too. Yep. She says, I bet no one noticed, I fucking did. You couldn't really see them jiggling about on those sunbeds. I know death is clever and all, but a plank keeping the sunbeds closed, really? That is no way that a plank could have fallen that way, it would have hit the floor first, but then this is a film, so anything can happen. The nail gun death was ace. No, it wasn't. It wouldn't happen. It wouldn't bloody happen. <laughs> but I have to confess, after watching them in a row and seeing water drip into electrical goods for the umpteenth time, I got a bit bored. <laughs> Having said that, the kills were good, and it would be unfair for me to give it any less than three scorching hot boobies out of five, as the other was a bit lopsided. Well, it looks like I rambled on again. You really need to pick a franchise that's found footage. No, we don't. So all I say is this made me ill, and it's shit, and that will keep me short and sweet. I'm off. Take care, guys. Stay safe. Best wishes, Blue. Thank you, Blue. Thanks, Blue. <coughs> yes. Well, yeah, I th- thinks that the plank falling down doesn't make sense and wouldn't have fallen like that, but we're happy for a nail gun just to go off whenever it feels <laughs> like it. That's my big movie bugbear, that is. Yes, yes. That and Diesel blowing up. <laughs> right. Doesn't happen. Right, you've got some feedback, I believe. Yeah, I'm going to try to get through it. 53 years old, and I've never had... <coughs> allergies that I'm dying these last couple of weeks. <clears throat> Would you like me to read it? Uh, no, I'll get it. <clears throat> oh. <clears throat> Maybe. Uh, this is from <laughs> this is from Jim Carrey. Uh, and what's his Twitter handle? Uh, that is a good point. I can't remember now. I'll right. find it. You, you read, I'll find it. Hello, chap. Into you again. So, Ulchi this time, and I'm really looking forward to hearing your thoughts. Well, I hope we had some coherent thoughts. Uh, my first Ulchi film wasn't any of the three under discussion. It was the draw, dropping eye impaling zombie flesh eaters. Gotcha. An excellent film, although paced a bit slow by modern standards. Where else are you going to see a zombie fight a shark without a trace of CGI? You gotta love that <laughs> stuff. I, yeah. What, what, what is it? What is it? What, the Z- Nazis that ride sharks? Which one is that one? Help me out. Sky Sharks. Yes, yeah, Sky Sharks. That was filmed live, I believe. There was no CGI in that film whatsoever. <laughs> I kind of want to see it. <laughs> uh, but you are talking about that. The Gates of Hell trilogy are some of my favorite films. Well, two of them are. And an essential part of the horror canon. As an overview of, the, overview of the trilogy, they are the first and foremost Italian films. Yep. They yep. are, of course, made for the international market, but definitely have the usual Italian Italian hallmarks. Actors of various nationalities deliver lines to each other with varying degrees of competence depending on whether or not they speak English as a first or second language. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm closing up and va- vamoosing. <laughs> <laughs> um, dubbing was common, but so was learning lines phonetically and delivering them parrot fashion. Also, Italian films of this era are far more, far more concerned with creating a striking image or set piece than they are <laughs> coherent plot. <laughs> yeah. As most Italian <laughs> cinemas of the time were noisy places for socializing, more like a cafe with an extra large TV on the wall than a new sort of uh, reverential screening room. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So co- a complex plot would be lost, uh, but an eye catching visual would be discussed for nothing. Makes yeah, sense. Yeah, good point. In chronological order, The City of the Living Dead is, it ought to be called large town of the living dead as it's a bit small for a city <laughs> well fair enough but it would be a less snappy title the main yep. location is called Dunwich and I assume that's a Lovecraftian reference but I'm not sure why they don't use any of their Lovecraftian material I don't know either Jim but that is exactly my thought it's Dunwich obvious Lovecraft the only other Lovecraftian thing is the constant fog everywhere but they did use Cheers as an influence 
<laughs> yes, they did use the TV show. No one from Cheers was there. <laughs> no, I know. The Living Dead aren't Romero zombies here. They are more like ghosts or demons in the form of body corpses. Agree. Yeah. They yeah. cause bizarre and horrific events often by just being in the vicinity. I like this. It's more interesting than constant zombie apocalypse reruns and allows for some truly weird events to take place. Yep. Some extremely gory events, too. Yes, we, 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 absolutely. All effects are practical, of course, but one can only one wonder at Fulci's powers of persuasion. <laughs> yeah. The young lady who vomits up her intestines, for example. How do we achieve that without CGI? Simple. Get the actress to swallow a large quantity of what apparently raw sheep intestines and then vomit them back up. Yep. Yeah. How do you show our intrepid investigators are being beset by storm flying maggots? Stand out, stand out of shot and throw maggots at them. Gotcha. Yep. And some rice. There have to, there have to be easier ways to earn a living. Jim, if I'm butchering your feedback, I am so sorry. <laughs> After seeing the first one, I was amazed that Katarina McCall went back for more. But she did. And of course, I just mentioned the joke with the head kill, a truly accomplished bit of past. Yeah, that's a good scene. Yep. The Beyond. Gorgeous for Fabio Fritzi's score. Yep. Um, a lot of people like the Italian scores. Oh, I do. I, 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 I could take it or leave it. It doesn't affect me one okay. way or the other. You know, it's just one of those things. Incredible picture painting in this one. The blind girl standing below on the bridge with her dog comes to mind. The nimble like hell dimension at the end. And the flooded cellar. The gore in this is up with Fulci's best, starting from opening. Never mind the Hammer Studios approach of building up the things. Open with a crucifixion and go from there. There's even mm-hmm. less of a coherent story. Who or what is Emily? Whose side are the mysterious servants on? Why are the dead in the hospital reanimating? What is Schweck trying to achieve? Who the hell thought mixing live tarantulas with cheap toy tarantulas was going to look convincing yeah. anybody ever? Yeah, watch it on VHS, it looks a bit better. <laughs> and as the effect is one of the weakest widely on it. But that, as previously mentioned, is hardly important. The dialogue does occasionally verge on parodic. We, we blind see things more clearly. You have carte blanche, but not a blank check. Yeah. But that's a minor complaint. One of the original video nasties, but now available on Amazon Prime, as is the City of the Living Dead, come to that. And Cannibal Holocaust, How Times Change. Yeah, we can watch them whenever we like. Yep. Sadly, I'm going to finish with House by the Cemetery, at least favorite of the three. Also an original video nasty, and a prosecuted one at that. Unfortunately, it's more like a slasher than a twist of weirdness of the previous two. It absolutely, I, I, I yep. mentioned it had a different feel. You put it in different words, we all, we all get it. I'll admit, Rodenstein's look is unique design, but the film as a whole is less interesting. This one just seems to have a lot less going on. Fewer set pieces and less to look at. But I, and I do agree with that. Although I will say Fulci really knows how to frame a house exterior shot and the eyes. Don't forget the eyes. Yes. I know Bob gets a lot of stick, but he doesn't bother me as much as he seems to bother other people. Story-wise, <laughs> it is <laughs> it's never He bothered his own parents. <laughs> Because they never watched him. <laughs> yes. Story-wise, it is never made entirely clear what benefit Bronstein is getting out of continually patching himself up with bits of other people. It really doesn't, as he no. just seems to be rotting away in a cellar. Yes, it's extending his lifespan, but he doesn't seem to be doing anything with the extra years. Well, he's in the cellar killing people. Perhaps Fulch is making a comment on um, old age. <laughs> is that enough? <laughs> Shut up. Oh. Uh, as I said, looking forward to hearing your opinions as at least one, as a, as a last thought. Anyone who enjoyed the first two could do a lot worse than check out We Are Still Here, the 2015 film with Barbara Crampton. Yes, that is good. It is. For those who don't know, it is a rather well done pastiche of Fulci style, both cinematography, cinema, cinema, cinematographically, <laughs> and the creatures it looks on good. the elements of the plot. <laughs> right. <laughs> Although the effect is slightly marred by having a coherent plot and story. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I've blabbed on far too long, so I'll say cheerio now. Cheerio, Jim. Jim, thank you so much. I'm sorry to uh, Cheers, butcher, butcher everything. And <laughs> I, I'll I, read I, it next I, time. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Yeah. And I do, love the, I do love the observation that I think both Chris and I noticed we just didn't bring it up. About Frodenstein. What's he doing with his extra time? 
He's yeah. just in the basement he's killing people. Seller. I mean, do they let him out? Does he go out for a Saturday night stroll? I like your observation. Yeah, that's, that's very good. Cheers, Jim. Yeah, Jim's uh, Twitter name is at Chili Blade. Okay, gotcha. Uh, I often get into a little bit of film chat with Jim every so often, and uh, very welcome his insights are too. Right, right, right. Cool. So, yeah, I think, yeah, Gates of Hell trilogy, we're all sort of, we're on the same sort of I know. Wait, and, really. And I, I really enjoyed it. I, I am glad that we did this one. I got me to watch two movies I'd never seen, and yeah. I, I really liked them. Yeah, you would have thought Dave would have sent some feedback in, wouldn't you? You'd have thought. <laughs> he is, apparently. He just didn't time it well. He's going to send us something to read next time. I know, I know, I know. And now that I've said that on the podcast, he's going to have to. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Exactly. Brilliant. It's actually, it's made a pleasant change, not for us to sit here and just slag something off. It is. It's, we actually agreed on all three movies. As much, uh, as much fun as it can be, and I've got to admit that I have, uh, I don't think I've written a positive review for ages. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking crap! I've been sent. I, I know you really you, you haven't. I've the last few I've looked at it been yeah yeah. So uh, yeah, it is nice to uh, actually review something positive. And speaking of that, what are we going to do next time? I don't know, Chris. What are we going to do? Well, what we are going to do is we're going to do a franchise catch up. So all the franchise, not all of them, but the franchises that we've covered already that have added extra installments over the past year or two, we're going to catch up with them. Okay, which one are we going to do? So we've got four. We're going to cover Leprechaun Returns, which I know you're looking forward to. And, and actually, I've already given that, uh, I think I've already talked about that movie a little bit. You spoke about it on Good, Bad and Ugly a couple yes. of shows back. So yep. yeah, we're going to do a full review. So Leprechaun Returns, Hellraiser Judgment, Leatherface, and Halloween, the 2018 film. Because we don't know your thoughts on it yet. No, you don't. I'm going to have no. To. Yep, yep. You know mine, because I did that little <laughs> mini-show with Gore, but maybe my opinion's changed. It hasn't, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I, I know. <laughs> I know. I do know. <laughs> and, and then, at some point, you're going to tell me Dangertainment Halloween was actually a good movie. Well, uh, I'm, I don't think I've watched that since we covered it, actually. <laughs> when did we do that? That must have been about three years ago. It was the Busta Rhymes Kung Fu scene. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. I will say this. At least it was entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we can mention... I may give it that a rewatch before next show as well, just to uh, have a bit of a comparison. Okay, so it's Leatherface, is it... And it's Leatherface 2017, is that the one? Yes. With Steven Dorff? All right. Yeah. Okay. Have you got access to it? Um, I've got access to most of these, I believe. Hellraiser. Okay. Hellraiser Judgment. Oh, God. Uh, okay. Oh, God. we got to talk about Hellraiser Judgment. Ooh. Oh, God. A little bit of an, in- little bit of an insight there? <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> <Send> to help. <laughs> oh, you might be pleasantly surprised then. I, I might. I was absolutely, absolutely pleasantly surprised with Leprechaun Returns. Yeah. Okay. I, I was always surprised, but yeah, 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 yeah. But everybody knows that. Everybody knows my thoughts on it. Cool. Okay, well, save it for next time. Okay, so with that in mind, I will say if you want to get hold of us, you can email us at ancientslumberpodcast at gmail.com. We are on Twitter at ancient underscore slumber. Uh, there is a Facebook page, which I have no access to because I'm not on Facebook, but I'll put the link in the show notes. And... uh yeah, that's it till next time. So if the world hasn't ended and Trump and Boris haven't fucked us all into oblivion, we'll uh, hopefully see you, well, hopefully by ha- by Halloween. That's what I'm aiming for. By Halloween, gotcha, yeah. Yep. For some spooky Halloween listening. Woohoo! You know, and it's funny, though, but there's... The Baz is going to drop some new Bazoween shows. Oh, I know, I'm looking forward to that. I, I'm looking forward to that. I, I always I always like I always like Baz and Duncan when they, when they get together. I like Duncan's shows, but... The Baz yeah. always holds a special place in my heart. Absolutely. Brilliant. Yeah, so go and give Baz a listen and listen to lots of horror podcasts because we're all out there fighting the good fight. Absolutely. Trying to entertain you. Absolutely. Excellent. In that case, I think it's time for us to say goodbye. Goodbye, Myron. Goodbye, Chris. Bye. It's him. Go on, get out of here. What are you doing? I'm not the one. Get in the house. Get through. I, I, I can explain everything, Mr. Ross. Shut up, you bastard. <laughs> What are you trying to do to my daughter? Huh?
Please let me explain, Mr. Ross. I was only looking for a place to sleep. I swear. Perfect. No. Measuring. No. No. 